Ha! I wonder who this guy is. people who are currently occupying this room. Uh, I'm not sure that's even legal, but given who this probably is... I love that, I love that, how Joshua is like, there's no reason to be rude, and then he just <laughs> says the same thing, just a little bit more politely. Yeah, this is that royal family member who was visiting the region. And there's a huge problem with that. If he's demanding this room, he's probably going to get it. Oh no, they're making it even worse. <sighs> no doubt that's been a very unfortunate experience for you. Looks like they're a little early than we expected. Oh no, this country is doomed already. <laughs> He seems nice. Aww. Although, you know, we have ice cream, so it really need large sums of money anyway. Yeah, I had a feeling this was too good to be true. Don't make things worse. So we had a stroke of major good luck and then incredible bad luck. Even more bad luck, of course.
Oh, hi there! Wow, you've appeared in every chapter so far! Yeah, some pretty major problems. <laughs> that is very true. So this has been a strange roller coaster of luck. We've now hit on some good luck again. Sometimes it's nice to have connections like this. Yeah, he probably wants some kind of interview or asked to help with an article somehow. So, before you go to your room, you want to talk to the concierge again. You get a free fresh juice! It's just a nice little detail there. It's not related to any side quests or anything like that, but again, it's just nice and it's quite easy to miss that. Funnily enough, this room actually has more beds than um, <laughs> than the penthouse does. Well, I suppose he does owe us for that. Well, it probably did. That's exactly what I thought would happen. And you have an interview already? That's kind of surprising. You know what, I was going to say that exactly. Again, Estelle loves predicting exactly what the player is thinking. So yeah, that duo's broken up now, I guess. That's a shame, I kind of miss her. <laughs> and she's probably already broken everything in Orville Shops wherever she is. You know, I'm not surprised. And that means we're all doomed. Well, that's the first we're hearing of that. Joshua was perceptive as always. Well, given Estelle's track record, she probably would. Well, he's suddenly a lot nicer than he used to be.
And with that dramatic bombshell, back to Niall having a hangover. Good thing Shearer wasn't there at the time. <laughs> Hopefully he can get to where he needs to go without collapsing or just vanishing into the ether because this game was not designed for full screen mode, but anyway. Well, I get the feeling that once we head to the guild, uh, yeah, we're going to be finding out something. Yeah, it seems everyone around here knows the Ravens. Matilda seems to be a little bit of an amateur poet. I kind of want to see what the commotion is over on... over here. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess he's taking care of his own side quest. <laughs> it's also kind of nice that you get to see other braces doing jobs. I think this is the first time. <laughs> I think he just said help me there. Reminds me of the Safari Zone Warden. Okay, Air Leaden. We haven't actually seen that place yet. Yes, there's a place to the east that is simply called The East. Yeah. They basically use The East as an excuse to justify any, any Asian cultural influences they can put in. So, for example, the Elmo Hot Springs that were mentioned earlier. And we'll see a few more eastern things as we progress through this game in the series. I just find it kind of interesting how, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, um, games do tend to have, like, an, a fantasy counterpart culture of Asia, but this game's kind of blatant and it's just simply called The East. But anyway, so we have a few quests here. Find the prototype, Orion Road Monster, as well as Warehouse Key. But first, we need to go ahead and check in with you, because we're probably going to find out something once we do. Considering how upbeat he is, he probably doesn't know what just happened last night. And I think that's about when he's going to be informed. Oh good, the music cut out. Joshua immediately jumps to arson, interesting. Yeah, we were just there. Okay, that's really bad. So, we're gonna be heartless jerks. I'm gonna actually take care of these three side quests before going to the orphanage. Yeah, this is probably one of the biggest points in the game where you feel like a complete asshole for doing side quests early. But I want to get these side quests out of the way, and the first one that I want to get out of the way, actually while we're here I can talk to the person for Find the Prototype. 
Though that's not the first quest I'll be getting out of the way. He's upstairs at Joan Arms and Guards. Okay, sorry for the music cut there. Talking to this guy, he's actually the one for the Find the Prototype request. And we're gonna butt in now. So the interesting thing about this request is, it and Orion Causeway Monster are essentially one and the same. He said there's some very powerful monsters down there, and that he lost the prototype gun down there. We also have to fight a monster in the Onion Causeway, you can kind of put two and two together there. So we'll be taking care of both of those at basically the same time. For the other quest though, we're going to need to head to the south block and talk to a guy who... Yeah, remember when um, there's this guy down here talking about the warehouse key? Well, it turns out that he's lost it, as you can tell if you've looked at the bulletin board. So, yeah, pretty much just a small odd job for braces, but hey, any workers, good work. Well, not when we have an orphanage that burned down and we don't know what happened to the matron or the orphans. We don't even know if any of them are still alive, but we're gonna do a side quest because, yeah. I still find that now is generally the best time to do these quests, and this one can be completed with... Uh, without leaving, I almost said bows, without leaving ruin. I'm still too used to bows. So it's in the area around Aqua Rosa. And right now, does he have any more leads? Doesn't seem like it. Well, hopefully none of your bosses read the bulletin board. So it turns out that if you go here, even though we were told not to go near the, um, the warehouse district, we're just going to head down these stairs underneath this bridge, cross over these wooden planks, and go around behind the Aqua Rosa bar, because if we head here... Not really. I was about to say we're not Rex, but then again, Rex doesn't really have much experience diving into actual seas, just seas of clouds. So, something hooked to snag it, huh? Well, I kinda drew attention to the bar having fishing rods for a reason last time, so let's go ahead and check out one of those. As I said last time, if they're examinable, it means that they're probably important for something. We have to talk to this guy though before we can actually borrow one. And we don't even have to go all the way up there, we get another progressive rod. So with this fishing rod, let's go over and fish for a key. I'm pretty sure you would not be able to do this in real life because the key would probably be far too small to catch with a fishing hook. But anyway, this is video games. In video game logic, fishing rods can catch anything, including apparently bus stop signs, according to Persona 4. I don't remember that, but I know it was referenced in Q2. So, fishing solves everything by Estelle's logic. Hey, we caught four salmon before. I know, because I had to sell them off to do that thing that I showed a couple of parts earlier with the no money. And Estelle, Queen of Fishing, strikes again. She was able to fish up the warehouse key. So this is a pretty simple side quest, but it is a little out of the way to get to this area, so I can kind of see why some people might take longer to complete it. You've kind of got to scour the town a little bit before you, uh, before you find where the key is, but now that we have the key, we can just return it to this guy, and hopefully his bosses did not check out the Brace of Bulls and Boards, so they're going to be none the wiser. Uh, 
Ah, uh, yeah, you probably don't want to know. But we still got it. At least it wasn't eaten by a shark or something. And yep, that's all we need to do. The quest is done. So like I said, that one's pretty simple. Do you have anything to say about this? Yeah, the region does seem to be famous for its technology. Yeah, there's a little bit of a backstory on the Dalmore family. It's a little anachronistic for the Labelle region. Okay, good to know we may have work here eventually. I just wanted to come here just, just, just to see if the mayor was here, and he is. Yes, uh, we've met him, much to our horror. Well, uh, he's already been bothered a little bit, but to be honest, he kind of deserves it. So, the Orion Causeway is just down here. If we check the full map of the region, we'll see that this leads to Air Lesson, which is a fort along the wall. There's also the Saffil Tower, but we're not going to be doing that just yet, so I'll explain why once we get there. There are actually a few new enemies on this route. In addition, there's one treasure chest here to find. Now, many of the enemies here will be uh, also encounterable on the way to Janus Royal Academy, which we'll be going to at some point later anyway, but here we go, there's a chest here. Deathblow 2! Reduce to searching empty chest? That's really- Hey, wait a minute! You're reusing messages, game! This thing, though, we can't encounter over there, to my knowledge, so I want to go ahead and fight one of these things. Now, if I remember correctly, these things can inflict instant death, so, uh, yeah, this is why I was talking earlier about how, um, how the fact that the shops are selling instant death protection is a little bit suspicious. Oh, nice, petrified. That's useful since they have so much HP, and I think your model glitched a little bit there. Um, right, let's just use Soul Blur in case I get faint. These things aren't weak to any element anyway. Yeah, you've got a ton of HP. Oh, that's it, Demonic Talent. Yeah, I think that thing can insta-kill you, so... Uh, yeah. No, I guess Flicker's not going to delay its turn at all. Okay, Blind is useful, and it seems like this thing's actually more weak to physical attack than it is to magic. Kind of makes me want to check out its entry in the Monster Notebook. Yeah, it's worth a lot of experience, because it's quite strong for this point in the game. Yeah, its arse defense is higher than its physical defense, so that's kind of interesting. But anyway, uh, we've got this thing. In fact, I actually think that is... I might as well fight this now. It is the Lily Mover's cousin, the Corn Mover. And uh, yes, it's apparently a carnivorous corn plant. We also have Flying Moth. Uh, I think I'll be able to catch them all in a Hellgate. Oh, they're 10% weak to Aerial, so I may as well go for that. I think they will all die to this barrage of attacks. Uh, definitely with the plus 10% strength to it. Yeah, this should hopefully do it. I don't want to waste all of that nice CP that I have built up on Estelle. Well, the thing has fainted anyway, so... Yeah. Oh, I also recently upgraded my weapons. So that's probably why I'm doing so much damage to the enemies here. And I'm not showing off White Gahana yet, there is a reason for that. There's a fight coming up, it's, well, I should just say it, it's the Orion Causeway monster. Well, let's just go ahead and use the uh, Terra Bomb. And that fight, I'm really gonna need it. So, yeah, you'll be seeing it in that fight, definitely. And in order to get to that fight, we need to take the path to Saffil Tower. So let's just head down here. I would normally show off all of the monsters in these areas, but I have a feeling I'm going to have to pack quite a bit into this episode, so I can always fight those things later on. As I've said, there are more places throughout the region that we can see them. 
So, this is the entrance to Sathel Tower. And that is the monster, but first I want to show you something. There's actually a chest here. I'm not going to grab it yet because it counts as one of the chests for Sathel Tower, and I want to get them all in one run. So, this thing here, we are going to be getting a new party member shortly into this chapter. Normally, I wouldn't recommend fighting this thing until you get that new party member because it makes this fight so much easier. But, I'm crazy, I'm going to try and do it now. If you are doing it now, I would highly recommend having a white Gahana. In fact, let me just go ahead and do my tactics. I think Joshua standing a little bit further back is probably good. Let's do this. So we have a whole bunch of these things. Helmet crabs. These things, in fact, um, so it says they're surrounded by a force field. What this doesn't mention is that these things reflect all physical attacks, including S-Crafts, which can make them very, very dangerous. But White Gahana, like I described before, is essentially Hellgate plus Aerial. Why do I say plus Aerial? Because you can target a point on the map of your choosing when you cast this. So, yeah, it's AoE is... Actually, I think it's about the same size as Aerial, but... Mm, do I move a little bit forward? I think I'll move a little bit forward, because I think these things do move to attack you. And they can also call these ponds for backup, and they like to do that a lot. Okay, at least you moved into the White Gahana range. So let's just check out these things. Mint Pom. Uh, it can use Arts as well. Okay, then. I'm pretty sure these things can cast Diamond Dust and AoE water attack, so that is kind of bad. I think I'm going to focus on the helmet crabs, mainly because if I don't then, um, oh, right out of the AoE, that's annoying. Mainly because once I get rid of them, I can safely use crafts on things. This is White Gahana, by the way. Very strong, 20% chance of faint, and you can aim its AoE wherever you want. So yeah, it is essentially Hellgate plus Aerial. The two best AoE spells from the early game combined into one for the mid-game. I love how the Poms look sad when they're affected by a status. So, okay, more Poms. Uh, this is going to be worth a ton of experience, isn't it? Yeah, you might actually notice though, White Gahana does have a longer cast time than Hellgate does. So you will need to bear that in mind. I think it's one of the first arts we're seeing so far that has longer cast time than average. So sometimes that might not be entirely ideal. Aha, you stayed in the AoE, thank you, because I'm pretty sure everything is going to die right now. I love how White Gahana looks too, it like breaks a hole in the middle of the map. You know what's funny, I think I actually remember referencing the White Gahana spell back when I was doing my playthrough of Fire Emblem and Sacred Stones on this channel. And that's actually because uh, playing that game on the channel coincided with me playing Trails in the Sky on my own time for the first time. Anyway, that was much easier than I expected it to be. Wow. On Nightmare, that fight is actually really bad if you don't have that third party member. So yeah, by defeating that monster, we actually get the Zero-Type Test model. Now, if we look into our items here... Zero Shot X, this actually counts as a weapon for Olivier, but sadly Olivier is not with us, and we have to give it back to the researcher for the quest, so he never gets a chance to actually use this, which is unfortunate. But it does count as an additional weapon for our weapons log, so that's good to know. So let's go ahead and give the prototype weapon back to Carl. Oh, don't worry, we already did. Yeah, I feel like the game doesn't really expect you to do this quest this early, but anyway. Monsters being attractive to Septian causes a lot of problems in this universe, doesn't it? Actually though, completing this quest early is very useful because not only do you get the BP and the money from the guild, you also get an attack 2 quartz. That's also a quartz we didn't have before, so that's another one for the achievement log. 
So let's see, I actually really like HP 2 on Joshua though. And attack 2 will lower his defense by a fair amount. Yeah, remember when I was talking about Flare Arrow earlier? It's easy to get, it only requires 3 fire energy, but it's weaker than a lot of other second tier single targeting art, so it's... Uh, I don't really like it all that much. It's not really that worth it unless enemies are specifically weak to fire. Okay, do I have enough? No, I think I need 80 to open a slot in Estelle. Yeah, just barely not enough wind. And it'll be a long time before I get enough time sequence to get another one of those um, action two or cast two, but I definitely want those. And let's go ahead and report these three quests to the guild. Warehouse key done. Find the prototype done. Orion Road monster done. No rank advancement though, but at least we get a good amount of money from that. And with that, that is every side quest done and dusted, and that means, finally, we can actually afford to care about the orphan's well-being. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I feel like such a heartless jerk, but... 